A very good Friday afternoon to you. I hope I find you well on this what is a cloudy but actually quite nice day here in Manchester. A um, few jobs today so got those out of the way. May have a few more later on but as is human I'll try and put them off till tomorrow. Why do today what can be left until tomorrow? That's my motto. Um, a couple of things in uh, in this video. Uh, first one, uh, it has been suggested that I do um, like a series of uh, email, viewer email uh, request videos as it were. Um, so if you think that might be of interest, uh, let me know in the comments and uh, I'll kind of do perhaps one of those or two of those a month, something like that. So if you have uh, anything that uh, needs a, um, a full answer as it were and it's uh, too long for the comments section or you don't want to put uh, your thoughts and feelings in the comments section uh, drop them in an email I'll put my email address attached to this and uh, drop me an email uh, but also in the comments section obviously down below uh, tell me whether you think that'll be a good addition to this channel because um, I don't want to start particularly doing anything that's just for my gratification as it were um, it will be something that needs to encapsulate the interest of all of us all this nonsense you know um, so in the comments let me know whether you think that's going to be a good addition uh, and I'll weigh up whether uh, the number of people say yep yeah, great thing do it or no don't do it it'll be boring so many of the channels do it don't bother um, so I will let you know anon what that um, result of that vote as it were is um, the second thing and the main kind of thrust of this video as it were I want to talk about um, transport uh, and kind of the uh, future of transport and what I view to us as uh, human beings, sophisticated first world human beings, kind of going backwards a little bit. Now I'll explain that, <coughs> excuse me, um, what I mean by kind of going backwards is uh, when I was a kid, um, back in the 1960s, I was kind of at the tail end, if you will, of the steam age here in Britain. I do recall uh, in, in a place that's actually now a big uh, exhibition centre here in Manchester called GMEX, um, or there's something called the MCCC now, um, used to be a central Manchester railway station and uh, there used to be uh, three railway stations Piccadilly which is still there Victoria which is still there and Central Station which is I say now uh, GBEX or MCCC or whatever it's called um, and I do remember uh, steam trains going in there and it was a lovely thing to see and I'm still a fan of steam um, we obviously went to uh, then uh, diesel and diesel electric and so on and so forth um, but it seems like um, in certain aspects of transport we are moving backwards also when I was a child in the 60s we had trams oh yes in the old days when the streets were cobbled uh, and there were the occasional horse and cart still uh, delivering milk and delivering beer to pubs uh, we had tram lines now the original trams of course were um, horse pulled along the streets um, very similar uh, technologies also were employed like the uh, cable car network in San Francisco for instance um, but it seems like a lot of the major cities um, in the UK, certainly uh, Manchester, um, I think Birmingham has one, uh, or Dublin has one, not too sure about Ulster, not sure, uh, a big hoo-ha in Edinburgh with the, uh, with the trams as they've actually only just got theirs running after money running out. Um, so we've now got this new um, interlinked uh, tramway system here in Manchester which basically can take you uh, north, south, east and west of uh, the city which is a good thing. Now but the way I look at it is um, we had trams, trams were considered to be old fashioned um, as the uh, diesel uh, passenger bus technology came along and they ripped up all the tram lines and tarmacked over the cobbles 
and we thought that the trams were never to be seen again. But hang on a moment and fast forward 50 years and lo and behold they're coming back. So why are we looking to the past as it were for transportation solutions? I find that quite interesting. Um, is it that we are now realising that certain things were actually better in the old days? You know, you do hear a lot of old buggers saying, oh, things were better when I were a lad. And, <clears throat> you know, maybe, just maybe, they might be right. Um, it seems to be the case that we are looking backwards to go forwards. Um, another thing that kind of sticks in my craw um, is that I remember the days, as no doubt you do, most people do, and if you don't remember it, you'll have certainly heard of it, where... We could travel from London Heathrow to New York JFK in three hours on this thing called Concorde, this wonderful um, binational development of a supersonic passenger liner, uh, which obviously was designed for the uh, rich and well-heeled and the good and gracious in our society. We, me, the great unwashed mill educated, just couldn't afford to travel on such a wonderful uh, piece of equipment. Um, but after the uh, Concorde crash, uh, which was very sad in Paris, uh, when they withdrew um, the Concorde service, apart from the fact that it was very elitist and also uh, quite expensive. Um, but we've gone from a situation where the flight, let's say, from London Heathrow to uh, New York JFK uh, used to take five stroke six hours. It came down to three hours and now it takes, funnily enough, five to six hours again. Um, were things better in the past? Funny, you know, we're, 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 we're kind of getting to the point where we've now got all these nice, posh, wide-bodied, fly-by-wire jets, as it were, where the, uh, the pilots have never actually done any real flying, as it were. Um, where, where I fly, I fly and all, all my plane controls are connected by cables, where, uh, in effect... The pilots today are flying a video game because everything is flown by wire. Uh, it's all electrical connections and servos and all that kind of thing. And if you go ever go into a cockpit these days, you've got, in effect, very big games consoles with all the uh, altimeters and uh, directional indicators and that kind of thing. And the planes, obviously, these days can, uh, if they wish, put it on autopilot and it will literally uh, get off the ground itself, fly the course itself and land itself so the pilots to a certain extent are only there as a safety net should things go drastic, drastically wrong um, so surely with all that technology we should be able to develop a uh, plane which can recapture that three hour traveling time there is a rumor that they're building um, an aircraft with something called scramjet technology. Um, if you don't uh, know about scramjet, basically what scramjet is, um, <clears throat> normal jet engines run on uh, a variant mixture of kerosene, um, which is called A1 jet fuel, um, which obviously needs air to burn. Uh, that hence why they only travel at at 33, 35,000 feet uh, because there is still oxygen there to ignite the fuel. Um, scramjet technology uh, employs um, a variant of rocket motors uh, where the plane will take off as a plane. Uh, it will then climb very, very quickly out beyond the atmosphere and in effect you could drop over the planet to the other side and you could go uh, Manchester Airport to Sydney, Australia in about 45 minutes because you're just going straight up over the planet and back down the other side. Um, a very, very clever idea because they're using rocket technology. It doesn't need air to burn and uh, it will work above the atmosphere. So you will basically become, for want of a better phrase, an astronaut for a very short period of time. Uh, Stram Scramjet technology has been in the air <laughs> for a long time. Uh, it doesn't seem to be um, coming to fruition very quickly. Um, but I'm feeling that we are being 
backward looking a little bit. We are staying with traditional jets um, that take a long time to get anywhere. Lots and lots of people dislike um, jet travel because they get uh, jet lag and of course uh, perhaps the jet lag wouldn't exist if it only took 45 minutes perhaps to get to the other side of the planet. Um, another interesting thing the Japanese as you know have the bullet train. Um, we here in Britain have just proudly announced our new intercity trains which will go as fast as 125 miles an hour. Really? The new bullet train that the Japanese have just launched goes 400 miles an hour and they are now um, working with the possibility of maglev trains. Now if you don't know what maglev is, as the name might suggest, magnetic levitation. Um, if you ever as a child played with magnets, uh, you know that different poles attract, so the north and the south pole attract and sit together, where if you put the north and the north to either to opposite sides, the thing appears to float. Exactly the same with maglev. Maglev works this way, uh, it allows no friction because there's nothing to be rubbed against because it's away from any trap and it will also in theory uh, not have a limitation on speed. So I'm hearing you say, ah I'm gonna admit now Stuart, we all know that things will be limited by speed because of air resistance. Ah well you see now that's very very true because the faster you travel uh, the consistency of the air gets thicker and thicker and obviously hence why certain cars have a certain limit to how fast they can go. So even supercars 155, 180 miles an hour can't go any faster because of air resistance. Now with maglev technology um, what the Japanese are thinking is something that I toyed with <coughs> hypothetically in my head for quite a while if you build tunnels and those tunnels were sealed in compartments and each compartment was vacuum sealed therefore it being a vacuum there is no air therefore there's no resistance so the train being maglev with no friction can go through a vacuum at unlimited speeds so unlimited speeds may well mean obviously you can go massive distances very very quickly and obviously because they're tunnels they can go underground uh, and therefore you're looking at uh, no problems going over hills um, through or around mountains so the course can be direct even to the extent that and they have hypothesized this that the tunnel could be suspended under the ocean on cables uh, so that very much like the channel tunnel to a certain extent but it will be a sealed unit floating uh, in mid sea rather than mid air the train would go through still with the sealed compartments vacuum sealed uh, so the train could not only go nationally within Japan but internationally as well to maybe mainline China or whatever and those distances can be covered in extraordinary speeds because the beauty of maglev there is no friction therefore there is no resistance even from rails. So I hear you saying but hang on a minute um, how are you going to stop this thing when it's going the speed of a bullet? Well the things that you do with maglev you see is that all you have to do is reduce the charge to the, the electromagnets do it gradually and the, the train will slow down and if at every point it's going to be a collision or fears it's going to be a collision then you turn the power off gradually fairly fairly quickly and all the train will do is sink back to the track and the train will stop very clever very very clever so um, I view our new announcement here in the UK as still being a little bit Victorian shall we say um, one that's actually come to fruition really and, and, and will be here uh, and we will all be using them very very soon self-driving cars we're all very aware of self-driving cars uh, Google have been developing it for a long time and now all the major manufacturers uh, all have or have a variant of all these cars that will park themselves you take your hands off the steering wheel press a button it will find a space and pull itself in there if that's not self-driving what is um, I think it will be a revolution, I think that insurance rates will come down, I think it will probably be the greatest or one of the greatest investment, uh, inventions in automotive history to be perfectly honest with you uh, because it takes us the fleshy bit 
uh, out of the equation where going too fast is concerned, jumping lights, um, but also it gives us the availability, should we wish, that if we're feeling tired on a long drive, uh, we can put it into auto drive mode, for instance, and we can get some sleep. And so therefore, not having accidents, not killing us, and not killing anybody else. And I think the self-driving cars will see them on the roads, certainly within the next five years or so. Um, now then, I know you're going to say, oh, well, here we go now, is a sci-fi nut, so what can you expect? Transporters. Uh, it has been proved by a lab, I think at MIT, that it is possible uh, to transport something from somewhere to somewhere else. Now, granted, all that they sent was a little batch of data within a, a, a laser beam cooled uh, in nitrogen. Um, now, from small things, great things grow. The old acorn scenario. Um, they have proved they can do that. So why can't they send an adult or a person? Well, let me tell you why. We are such complex beings that there would need to be not only the technology you used to see in Star Trek that used to break you down into uh, photons, as it were. Um, you would then have what's called a buffer, which is referred to in Star Trek. The buffer holds your pattern, what you look like. You are then sent by the transporter technology. The same technology exists at the other end, so the transporter pad of the buffer and the computer banks at the other end to put you all back together. Now, the problem that you have with that, of course, that we are so complex, there is not enough computing power on the planet right now to deal with the complexities of putting a human being back together in the right order. You may end up with a nose on your ass, you know, or an ear on your chin, or something like that, because you, we, we are just so massively complex that it just can't be done. Will it be done? I think it will. And the reason I think it will is, is very similar to my thoughts about a video I made a while ago about tech. Um, a lot of tech we have now wouldn't have existed without somebody enjoying science fiction who then thought, I wonder if that can be done. I wonder if that can be made. Well, you know, we've been seeing transporter technology in sci-fi for many years, so you can bet your life the people who sent the, back, the pack of data will now be looking at sending a mouse for instance, because of course where life forms are concerned, they always use mice and rats and bunnies and all that kind of thing. So, you know, you can bet your life somebody's working on it, and if somebody's working on it, somebody will be bright enough to achieve it. So, um, future tech and up-and-coming tech where transport is concerned. I find it very interesting. I find the whole concept of where we're going um, is, is a we are an incredible species for pushing uh, ourselves forward. I think our remit as human beings is uh, once we decide that something is impossible, we go out there and do it just to prove it wrong. And I think that's been proved time and time again with things like the Seven Bridge and you know the, the, the Great Eastern and, and going to the moon, if you believe we went to the moon. All that kind of thing. You know, you can't do that. It's impossible. Right then, leave it with us and we'll see in a couple of years. That kind of push that we're very, very good at, I do find fascinating. Back in the 80s, I used to watch Knight Rider. Yes, old Michael Knight, you know that man. And he used to talk to Kit, as you know, as he did in the recent remake, which I actually quite liked. And I thought, wouldn't it be great to have a car that you can talk to? I have a car that I can talk to. All right, it's not quite Kit yet. But I never thought in my lifetime I would ever see me sat in a vehicle and be able to say to it, ring Joe Swan, Joe Bloggs, or, you know, who, or Veronica, who's my partner, you know, or play music, or not only play music, play a certain track, or give me navigation to wherever, or set my air conditioning in my car. You know, I never thought I would see that day, but 
science fiction has a very, very good, or bad, whichever way you look at it, habit of becoming science fact. So let me know, if you live anywhere, that, that you've got some form of transportation system that I've not mentioned, or they're planning a transportation system that you think, that is fantastic, or whether your car does something that just blows your mind. But you think, yeah, how does it do that? How, how does it do that? You know, I've got a smart TV. How does it do that? You know, I've got the internet on it and I can watch anything, anytime, anywhere. Not on my laptop, on my television. You know, it's brilliant. So, um, that's where I am. Technology and transport. Um, are we looking back on certain things? Yes, we are. Are we bringing them back? Yes, we are. Why? Is there not another way? Or, you know, with the tram systems in Manchester, I drive everywhere because I can't walk that far without it hurting. Um, it looks brilliant. And from what I understand, it's quite expensive, but relatively reasonable, if that's not a contradiction, for the distances you can travel. Um, the, the, the plane thing. We've gone backwards, guys, girls. You know, is it time we look backwards and say, you know, we can do that again, but we can do it better? Let's get scramjets working. Really, come on. 45 minutes to Australia? It's got to be good, really. Maglev. Why can't Maglev be everywhere? I appreciate its cost, but, you know, the Victorians invented steel wheels on steel rails. In fact, how does that work? smooth and smooth how does that work ah, there you go um, so there you go let me know if you're as fascinated by transportation technology as I am and the possibilities of transport let me know if you use public transport how your journey has changed you know there's Wi-Fi on buses now buses you know, there's Wi-Fi on trains you know, all that kind of thing um, let me know what your feelings are whether you feel I'm being unfair that, that, that trams have come back you know, we used to, have, used to have the things called trolley buses here in Manchester, which was like a double-decker bus, but ran on powers, power lines over the road, like trams do. But they weren't on tracks. And they were brilliant, they were silent, they were comfortable, they were, they were green, as we now call it, because they were electric. You know, we, some stuff in the past was brilliant, and I don't understand why they haven't brought them back. <clears throat> but anyway, there you go, I'll wrap this up now. Um, let me know what you think about the uh, e email response idea and um, let me know what your feelings are about transport. Do you think it's a nightmare? If you are subject to the hell on earth that is going to work by public transport, let me know. If you enjoy the odd ride on public transport, let me know. And if you are seeing things that are just technologically wonderful on transport, cars, buses, boats even, you know, let me know. There's another thing. They've taken the sea cut off the route between the UK and Ireland because my partner's Irish. I go over there quite a lot. Um, and now we're just back to ferries. Slow. It, why did they do that? Why? Hovercrafts. There used to be a massive hovercraft, a, a multi-car carrying hovercraft that went between Dover and Calais in France. They took that off years ago and I appreciate it was expensive to run, but it was quick. It was so quick, we've reverted to ferries. You know, sometimes we have great ideas, uh, and, you know, this is not a slur against anybody else. A lot of the great ideas come from Britain. You know, we, 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 we are um, an engineering powerhouse, or we were. We have some of the great minds here, and always have, and we don't seem to carry them through, and it's quite sad. And I find that quite upsetting. But anyway, there you go. You know what all this is about. Now, as always, if it's your first time here, they're not all like this. Some are. Of course they are. Um, watch talk, nonsense like this, scientific chat, philosophical chat, whatever you fancy. Have a look through my old stuff. If you like it, feel free to subscribe. Any queries, any questions, any comments, as always, let me know about the email thing. Um, I think that's it for this one. Maybe another one later. Not too sure. Little jobs again this afternoon. Just remembered one I've forgotten. Naughty Stuart. Anyway, that's it for this one. I shall speak to you again soon. Bye-bye.